My area of research is into uh, consumer and firm behaviour in the food market um, with particular application to people's nutrition and how they ha choose to purchase their food. Uh, this is a policy interest that's been growing concern over the last few years about the rising levels of, of obesity and the prevalence of diet-related disease. And as a result of this, there have been quite a few calls by many different groups of people um, for policies to be introduced to uh, mitigate the, the rise in these uh, diseases and the rise in the number of obese people. And why we think this is important is that economics is in an ideal position to assess and uh, judge whether or not these policies are going to be effective. So the government should think about both the responses of consumers and firms when they're designing policies and remember that policies that are targeted at either firms or consumers are likely to elicit responses from both groups of people. So for example, if you have policies that are aimed to change the way consumers behave and make decisions, um, this is likely to lead firms to also change their behaviour. So a simple example of this is the government's five-a-day campaign. Uh, now, this was an information campaign introduced a few years ago that aimed to encourage people to eat more fruit and vegetables. Now, what this did was um, told people that they needed to eat more fruit and vegetables and it had, could possibly have had the effect of shifting the demand curve outwards, which, given that firms, supermarkets in the UK, have um, price setting power and set their prices as a function of uh, the demand that they face, this could actually have led some firms to increase the prices of fruit and vegetables and may even have had the consequence of um, some consumers therefore reducing their fruit and vegetable consumption, which is obviously not the way the policy was intended to work. So this is just a really simple example of thinking about the interaction of consumer and firm behaviour and how that's crucial for assessing the effectiveness of any policy. So at the IFS, uh, a really important part of the work that we do is assessing and evaluating different policies, both that the government have in the past undertaken and might want to undertake in the future. The data that we have is um, quite novel and innovative, uh, isn't used by a lot of, lot of people in this area, and it's, from, it's collected by a market research firm. And the way it works is that households have um, a handheld scanner in their home and they scan all their shopping that they bring into the home. And, this follows the same households over time, which from an econometric point of view is really good. It means we can estimate things like fixed effects and random effects models, which is very useful. And we also have lots of data on the individual products that households buy. So we know the nutritional information of the products, the exact price purchased, whether or not it was on offer. And as well as that, we also have really rich demographic information on the households them themselves. One example of um, some work that we've done using this data is that we looked at what would happen or how we can think about estimating uh, giving households uh, cash to improve their diet. So there's a well-established relationship that households from higher socioeconomic groups have uh, better diets. So from this, you might think that giving poorer households more cash uh, might uh, lead them to improve their diets. So what we did was to estimate a model of demand over a number of different food groups and look at how demand for groups that we foods that we might think of as more healthy, so fruit and vegetables, versus things that we might think are less healthy, prepared food and that kind of thing, changed when you look across the income of households. And what we found actually was when we controlled for, through a household fixed effect, all the differences in households, so differences in education, differences in their preferences, differences in um, you know, long-standing habits, all the kind of fixed permanent differences across households, that actually short-term income changes had very little effect on the food purchasing behaviour of households. And this kind of just shows how really thinking about um, how we can identify causal relationships is really important in informing policy because actually it seems that what might be very expensive policy, so giving you know, people money, would actually not have as much of an effect as the government might hope.